So um, we're going to do a little sidetrack uh, mode today. Stay on the right side of this trail so uh, the drone does not um, blind any trees. I've got it far enough to the uh, right here, so we're going to be okay with that. So yeah, we're going to do a little side view so you folks can uh, see the bike and watch me as I'm riding. We're going to try to stay at a steady 10 mile an hour because the drone doesn't really want anything uh, too much faster on the bike. It has a really hard time staying up with you, so... Yeah, again, getting back to uh, bike laws, we were talking about the uh, we were talking about the um, laws that are coming going to be coming out in a lot of states, and they're it, they're passing their way through legislation now in the states through the House, and uh, it's going to take a while to get through the Senate as well, but it will, and there's going to be changes going to be done as well. But I'm telling you, speed's going to kill these. Uh, e-bike companies, if they keep making these bikes faster as they are, people are uh, going to be buying a lot of them and they're going to be banned from these trails. So I see that coming. Again, the uh, major age group of people is 50 and under is really wanting faster bikes, where somebody at 72 like myself, we don't want faster bikes. We want better components on the bike. We want um, dependability of the bike, how well it's made, and we want range on the battery. Those are some of the three things that we're looking for. So, yeah, just because uh, they can go faster don't mean they're safer. And, again, I see these kids out here, especially riding with no helmet, makes no sense to me. Of course, when I was young like that, I don't know. I never rode a motorcycle in my life. Maybe once, but uh, it wasn't one of my things. So I know that's important to these some of these kids that they just go faster and faster. So that's going to cause a problem with these uh, regulations. I see that coming for sure. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and stop this view uh, right here, and uh, we'll continue it, continue the discussion on it, and. Uh, yeah, we'll pick it right back up here once I uh, change the view of the drone here because I really don't want to get fly it through this intersection up here because it may not make it across the intersection as well. So, yeah. And it's a new mode here. I can get the camera to come back. All I got to do is go like... Again, we got it on the side track. And yeah, what we're basically talking about on these laws is uh, a lot of these states are now uh, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Oregon, and I'm sure California is already working on it as well. They're going to write legislation where there's certain things that uh, are going to impede uh, us riding these bikes on bike trails primarily. You have three uh, classes of bikes, class one, two, and three. And anything above 28 mile an hour, you're actually uh, beyond all three of those classes, which means that it's really not legal to ride on a uh, bike trail. So class one, you've got uh, throttle only. In class two, you can uh, get up to 20 mile an hour. And class three is uh, actually up to 28 mile an hour. And uh, you go beyond that with these faster bikes, you're really going to limit how you can ride your bike, shall I say. You know, I, I ride the bike trail an awful lot, but I also ride the... Uh, road quite a bit too. Of course, I won't be doing any drone coverage on on roads at all. That's just not safe. But today, I think we're going to uh, ride down to, uh, I call Eastwood Park. It is a place I can do some drone footage out in the wide open and uh, get off the bike and talk about the uh, 
Hovey a little bit. But yeah, let me know what you guys kind of think about. What would you like to see on these bikes? I mean, 750 watt is really all you're supposed to have on the uh, bike trails, as far as uh, watt motors. Where my juice now is a 1,000 watt motor, and really, we shouldn't be uh, riding on the trails with that, because it's, it's actually limited to 750. So yeah, the uh, laws are coming, guys, I'm telling you. It, now, it may take a year or two before it gets through legislation in some of these states, but after that, it's just going to be a snowball effect, as you guys well know. The rest of these states are just going to fall right into line like dominoes. So, I kind of see that happening. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and stop the footage right here on the uh, drone, and uh, we'll pick up another segment here. But, yeah, let me see. What, tell me what you guys think about the... Uh, Again, the bike laws and what we expect to see happening. Turn around, my drone don't really want to. Good morning, everyone. We're doing the uh, dolly track now. Drone is going to stay out in front of me as I'm uh, recording. And we're going to begin still talking about uh, what seniors want on uh, e-bikes. What are they looking for? Now, with that said, most seniors, and I wouldn't say a lot of seniors, but the majority of seniors have disposable income to buy these bikes. Now, that's not all the case with some people, but there are some budget bikes under $1,000 for you seniors that I would highly recommend. You know, they're... There's bikes out there that uh, are well worth the money at $1,000. So when you think you can't find a bike out there, they're out there. And uh, put it down in the comments section and uh, let me know if you want me to list some bikes that I highly recommend. And I will uh, see if I can do that for you. I'll link some uh, bikes that I have that uh, they, got, they sent to me to review and I'll give you guys a good uh, idea of what's out there on a budget bike. Good quality components. Where they've got uh, hydraulic brakes on them. They've got suspension. Uh, they have them in folding and non-folding. So there are different style bikes out there. But yeah, I'll be glad to link some stuff down there for you folks. And... Uh, yeah, now the only problem is when you buy a bike online, unless it's uh, here in the United States, if you're local here in the United States, shall I say, most of these bikes are built in China. Actually, most, almost all of them are now. So you got to keep that in mind when you're looking for a, uh, a bike. You may want to go to a local bike shop first in order to to make that purchase because if you are going out to uh, ordering the bike online you may not get any local support to help you with that bike if something happens to it where you need it worked on so I always recommend on your first e-bike till you guys get familiar with what you're purchasing that you uh, go to a local bike shop that sells them you may pay a little more but you're still going to get a better bike because the, they're local there to support you if the bike needs worked on. So keep that in mind on your first e-bike. Um, just because the bike's priced at twenty four to three thousand, twenty four hundred to three thousand dollars, don't mean it's the best bike out there for you. You get down around the thirteen to fifteen hundred dollar range. That is a sweet spot. For uh, bikes. Well, my drone just took a hit with the wind there. As you can see, the footage may have uh, changed a little bit there. I'm trying not to ride too fast where this thing is going to just get crazy on me. So, But yeah, shipping. Uh, most companies now have free shipping as well. So 
course, you're paying for that. Trust me, it's, it's in the price, but you're paying for it. And a lot of times when you get these bikes uh, in, you got damage on them from the shipping. So if it's coming out of China, you got to get it across the ship, and then you've got to get all these trucking companies that they just don't take uh, good care of these bikes when they're, when they're shipping them. And I can use one company in particular. FedEx is terrible. I've had damage at least on two or three bikes so far that uh, FedEx has shipped to me. I've watched these drivers flip them things around in the trucks to get them off, upside down from what the bike says, and they just don't care. So you got to keep those things in mind uh, when you're getting a bike shipped. I'd say 90% of the bikes, if not more, are shipped through FedEx. They're not shipped through uh, UPS or anything like that. Now, I did have a trucking company deliver one bike for me, so that does happen. They do use ship, uh, shipping companies to uh, deliver your bike. And I've had bikes where I got in, the controller was completely bad. Or not the controller, the uh, battery charger didn't work at all when I bought it. I had to go and order one on Amazon until I got hold of the company to send me one. So you'll see a lot of that when you're uh, opening up the box. You know, you just got to make sure all the parts are in there. Uh, read the manual, of course, before you really start assembling that bike. Now, with us uh, creators, we've done enough of these bike assembles that uh, they're pretty much standard on most bikes. There's not a whole lot of difference on uh, assembling a bike. Some's got the tires already on them. All you got to do is put the stem of the handlebars on. There's a couple companies out there. The bike is completely assembled. All you got to do is turn the handlebars around on a few of the bikes. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that uh, you don't have to do or you do have to do depending on the uh, bike you're getting delivered. On the derailleurs, I still fail to see a lot of these uh, companies put uh, derailleur guards that they can put over the derailleur. So if you dump that bike, you're not going to tear the derailleur up. That's a pet peeve of mine. As far as fenders, though, I don't care if they're plastic or steel. That really is insignificant to me as far as that choice. That really doesn't matter. I guess with uh, metal fenders, you're going to get a little more uh, weight on the bike, and that's what they're trying to uh, keep down. And they're also trying to keep down the price of the build on the bike, so they're going to go with plastic fenders for the most part. Anyway, let's go ahead and stop the video right here. Um, coming up on an intersection, I don't want that drone to lose me. So, yeah, we're going to get it to land here. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to get a little view of uh, maybe the river. Not sure you're going to see much of it, but this is, uh, I'm sitting right on a water fountain type. So if them water jets come on, I'm going to get soaked here. But no, I don't think it's going to be coming on today. But kids really like these use this in the uh, summertime for sure. But yeah, that's the, uh, again, the orbit mode, and uh, it'll fly right back into me here once it completes its little path, which is like about there. And I need my drone to fly over into the river, that's for sure. I'll lose a drone if that's the case. So yeah, this is a pretty cool little mode here. Okay, folks, this is the uh, zoom out mode. I've got it on the load setting here. So, um, yeah, this is the side rusher. Okay, folks, this is the hover mode. I'm going to move the bike here so you guys can see a little bit of the bike here. And again, this is the um, side rusher OBOX, my uh, 750 watt, 52 volt, 17 amp hour battery. It's got a twist throttle on it. It's got a uh, seven speed Shimano shifter cassette. It's got, uh, of course, um, pedal assist one through five, and it will uh, do about 28 mile an hour. Um, very nice bike to ride. I've had this uh, Cy Rusher, oh, Cy Rusher sent this to me about six months ago, and I've probably got five to 700 miles on it so far, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun to ride been a lot of fun to review. I did add a few items to it with the uh, the Rusher bag I put on it and uh, I put on uh, some bar end mirrors. I like those a lot. 
and I put on my uh, Faruna headlight in my bar up here. Um, but yeah, these are some of the additions I put on the bike. But yeah, it's a, it's a great bike to ride. It's got a double chain ring. It's got uh, dual suspension front and rear, which is good. And it's also uh, got plastic fenders. I don't care either way if they're plastic or metal. I don't think that's going to make my decision on buying a bike. So yeah, that's a little bit about it. Um, it's got folding pedals. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun to ride. So yeah, anyway, if you guys got any questions, put it down in the uh, comment section. And I'll uh, put any links that I can on stuff I purchased for the bike or the uh, bike itself. There is a discount code on my channel. So I'll put that down there for Cy Rusher. So you can uh, pick us OV up if you'd like. So yeah, I want to thank you guys for uh, watching the video. Share, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys on the next video.